In this segment, I want to introduce uh, the one of the most important concepts, especially in terms of basic concepts, to understanding MATLAB and to being able to to do anything in it. Uh, it derives from the fact that the way MATLAB was conceived as a, as a programming environment. Uh, MATLAB uh, stands for uh, Matrix Laboratory. And if you take the MAT and the lab, you get MATLAB. So that's where the name of MATLAB came from, which means that everything in MATLAB is based on a matrix. Now, let's talk about the term matrix yes it was a movie um, but in math cases a uh, matrix usually represents um, um, some kind of form where you have numbers in this arrangement and so MATLAB works with this whole matrix idea um, now in the term of what we're doing in, in, in the class that we're teaching um, you can refer to matrix in a couple of ways there's the matrix there's an array which looks just like a matrix. Um, but when we talk about uh, vectors, we're specifically talking about one dimensional matrices. So they would have um, only one row. So this would this one has you know two rows, uh, three columns. right? This one has two rows, three columns. Um, but when we refer in this class and in, in, in CS 1371, when you refer to a vector, you're referring to a matrix or an array that only has one row and then multiple number of columns, depending on how much data you have. And so vectors is where we're going to start here. Um, and so this is what we're going to concentrate on. So let's take that concept of vectors and let's do an overview here um, in terms of what is a vector um, in terms of the variables that we've talked about in that thing so if I come in here and let's take a step back if I come in here and I have variable a which values 3 and variable B that has a value of 6 and variable C that has a value of 7 and let's just say variable D that has a value of 8 um, if we if we look in memory uh, uh, this is memory location that we've named A, this is memory location that we've named B, memory location that we've named C, memory location that we've named D, and these are the values that are in those memory locations because of these assignments here. Um, well, let's say if we wanted to, let's say if this information, this data, uh, these numbers were related in some way and we wanted to sort of do operations on them as a group well right now each one has its own memory location and is sort of dealt with its own memory locations name and each one of these names are sort of individual vectors allow us to do something like this let's say if we had vector e and this is actually how you define a, a vector uh, we had three comma six comma seven comma eight right the equivalent of memory location here is that now we have memory out in the computer now e refers to this whole block and this location is e1 and this location is e2 let me put parentheses around here. E3 and E4. And so this one has the value 3, 6, 7, and 8. So now you can, by moving variable E around and, and doing operations on variable E, um, you can actually operate on all these things together as a group and as a bundle, which makes things a lot easier and really creates some, some sort of magical things. If, anyway, if you've programmed in other languages, this whole concept allows you to do some very interesting things in MATLAB that would be uh, a little bit more arduous in other languages. Um, furthermore, uh, you, could, you could come here and maybe do a variable f and let's say instead of putting numbers in there I put uh, text or letters in there um, 
All right. So then F would look something like this in memory, where this would be F1, F2, F3, F4, and uh, this would have a G, whoops, Q, I'm sorry, there's no F4 in this particular vector. Um, and likewise, I can do a G. Um, and let's say if I put true, T R U E, and a false, and a true, and maybe another false here. And I had a vector that looked like that. Um, so I could do G, and memory would look something like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, so you would have G1, G2, G3, and G4. And this would be true. This would be false. This would be true. And this would be false. So vectors can hold a lot of different things. Um, let's sort of take a step and look at this. Um, we have some basic types in MATLAB of information, and these, of course, are numbers. So numbers can be integers or real numbers, which we also call those doubles um, in, in MATLAB in, in most languages. Um, you also can have characters, which are usually denoted by a, a quotation mark. Uh, if you put characters together, in fact, a vector of characters is called a string, which we will talk about in depth later, uh, a little bit later. Um, and then you have these true-false values, which are known as Boolean values. And we have a whole discussion on Boolean values and how they operate and that kind of thing. And these are actually the basic types that we'll deal with in that lab. And those are sort of the the uh, fundamental types, and then you build on that with things like vectors and arrays and matrices and what have you. Um, the other thing to note here is that all of these vectors contain homogeneous information, the same types of things, and that is a feature of a vector, uh, is the homogeneity of, of a vector, so they are homogeneous, so you could not have a vector H uh, that had, uh, let's say, a character in it and a, an integer in it and a Boolean in it. Uh, that's, you can't do that. Um, things have to be homogeneous in, uh, with vectors. And so this is an overview of vectors. Uh, we'll get into now how do you index them, how do you do manipulations on them, how do you create them, um, how do you relate to them in terms of math, operations and functions and that kind of thing. Uh, but this is your overview on vectors.